everybody, how are we doing? So today we are looking at combinations. Um, so remember that we're working on these ideas of counting, okay? And last time we looked at permutations and permutations, remember the big thing there was that we had order, order mattered. So let's go back to our, our club of five people. So let's say, remember, our five person club, okay? Now, today I'm just gonna call them A, B, C, D, and E. Yes, we had names before, but whatever. Now we're just used to abbreviations. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna show you what the difference between a permutation and a combination in this, this first example, it's an example that we're, we're familiar with. So let's start with reviewing what we did last time with a permutation, okay, or permutations. So remember that for a permutation, order mattered, which meant that we were um, looking for a president and a secretary or something, but jobs that actually had meaning to them, so the order was important. So how many ways can we elect president and secretary and we have the permutation formula but we also used the pigeonholing method and we said that there were five people in the club so if we were going to elect a president there were five choices we had there then once we've elected a president there would be four choices for the secretary right and we said that we would multiply so that was 20 different ways Okay, so that was permutations. That was last time. Now we're gonna look at this in a combination type of problem. So we're still dealing with our five person club, but the question becomes a little bit different. This time it says, how many ways can we choose a committee of two people. So our club needs two people to put on a bake sale or something. So we need to choose a committee to do this. Now, here, president and secretary are definitely different positions. So there was an order that went on there. Now, if you're in a committee, does it matter whether you're the first person or the second person? Is there any particular order? Or do we just say, hey, you two, go over there and put on a bake sale. So what happens here is the order doesn't seem to matter. So order doesn't matter. It's just a group of two, two people. So like we did before, we're gonna make a list of like all the A, Bs, you know, like we did when we selected a president and a, and a secretary. But this time, we're just gonna look at our committees, committee possibilities, and the committee could be A, B, couldn't it? Or the committee could be A and C, or A and D, or A and E. Okay. That looks good to everybody. Okay, but the committee could be B and C, couldn't it? Or it could be B and D, or it could be B and E. But notice, did I write down B and A? So B and A, notice, is not on this because it's already over here. And if you're in a committee, does it matter whether it's B and A or A and B? You're both over there working on the committee. Nobody's more important than anybody else. You're just both putting on the bake sale, okay? So it doesn't get repeated in this one. Now, it could be that it's C and D or C and E. But again, I didn't use C and A because it was already down here. And I didn't use C and B because it's already written down. Okay, so when that order doesn't matter, then you don't have to worry about switching them back and forth. And then finally, it could be E and D. Okay. And again, order doesn't matter, so we don't need anything else. So these are all the different options for a committee. 
So what do we have there? Four, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten different ways to do this. Okay, ten ways to choose a committee. Twenty ways to elect a president and a secretary. Okay, so the, the wording of the problem makes a huge big deal. When you hear the word choose, a lot of times you have to think about the word choose, meaning that you're just, oh, I want those two, I'm choosing those. Over here, we use the word elect, but sometimes the better word is select. We're gonna select someone for that pl place and someone for that place, but over here, we're just choosing. We're just choosing, eh, we'll take those, okay? So, let's then look, we're going to leave permutations here for a while, and let's look at combinations and get into that. All right, so we say, now the definition here for combinations is not as nice as the one for permutations. It's more mathy, but just go through it and, and we'll, we'll get to using it, okay? So we say a combination... of R elements selected from a set of N elements is a subset with R distinct Okay, so like I said, very mathy in this one, but basically what we get from this is that we're going to, actually, you know what, I just told you not to use the word select because it's a combination, so we'll, we'll, we'll change this right now. Chosen from a set of N elements, okay, use the proper notate or proper wording there, but basically what this is saying is that we're going to have um, are different elements, or like in our case, two different people, people where order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. And they are still distinct, which means there is no replacement. Okay, so order doesn't matter, and there's no replacement. Now, with that being said, if we want to figure out how many combinations the notation here looks like NCR, okay? So again, just like the NPR, the C is a capital C and the N and the R are subscripts so they're below the line, so NCR. But now hopefully you see that this is definitely different than NPR, so you don't want to get the letters mixed up. NCR, and NCR is found by taking N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. So in permutations, we just did this, but because combinations are mean that there's no order going on. It means we need to divide out all of those guys that had the order in them. So we're also gonna divide by R factorial. Okay, so we've got N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. And another notation here that we use looks like this, N over R in parentheses. No line, I know it's really tempting to make it a fraction because that's the only time we've ever seen anything like this before, but it's not a fraction. This is N choose R, and that's how we say that, N choose R. And, well, <clears throat> most everyday, <clears throat> excuse me, most everyday people use this notation, mathematicians use this notation. Um, so you, you need to get used to this because this is what pops up in the book and this is what I tend to use, okay? So let's look at a couple here. Now, we already did this problem. So let's just use our formula to make sure that it works out right, okay? So let's just set up this. We know that the answer should be 10. But we started with five people in our club, right? And we're gonna choose two. Now, do not think it's just five times two. It doesn't work that way. It uses this formula, which means up top, we're gonna put five factorial. 
And then on the bottom, we're going to put two factorials. We're going to put two factorial, right, this number. And then we're going to do five minus two, which is three factorial. So what should happen is these two numbers, not with their factorials, but just the two and the three should equal the five. Okay, so that's how you know your factorials are right. Now this problem is not too difficult because none of these factorials are too large, but five factorial is 120. Two factorial, two times one is just two. And three factorial, um, three times two is six. So this just ends up being 120 over 12, which does indeed give us 10. So thank God we did the problem correctly. All right. Um, so let's look at some bigger ones. Okay, and I'm gonna we're gonna use the formula. Okay, before we go to the calculator. So we'll learn to use this formula, and then eventually we'll go to the calculator. So let's say. That I'll leave the formula here for right now. I wanted you to find 10 choose 3. Okay, 10 choose 3. So what that means is we're going to start with 10 factorial up top. We're going to put the 3 factorial on the bottom. But then remember we need that second factorial. So 10 minus 3 gives us 7. And we have 7 factorial on the bottom. <clears throat> now, if we're doing this without our calculator, we want to be able to, to work out these formulas. So remember that 10 factorial just means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, blah, blah, blah. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, and I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop with the 7 factorial because there's the 7 factorial on the bottom. Now, 3 factorial, we just decide 3 times 2 is 6. And then we're just going to leave that 7 factorial. Now the reason we're doing this is because those guys cancel out, right? Then we can also do some other canceling with the 6. So we can cancel out a 3, which would leave us a 2, and a 3 up here. And then this 2 could cancel with this 8, leaving us with a 4. So what we're actually left with, because everything in the denominator will always cancel, we're left with 10 times 3 times 4, which just gives us 120. So if you have 10 people in your club and you need to choose three of them to go put on a bake sale, there are 120 ways to do that. 120 different committees of three people from 10. Okay, so let's use, let's use the formula again, just so that we're getting into the, the habit with this. So let's go with seven, choose four. Okay, seven, choose four. So up top, we're gonna go seven factorial. On the bottom, we're gonna put a four factorial, and we'll put a three factorial. All right, look good to everybody. Okay, now, same idea that we did up above. We're going to start by going 7, 6, 5, but where are we going to stop? We're going to stop at 4. So we're going to go 7 times 6 times 5 times, and we'll stop at 4 factorial because there's a 4 factorial on the bottom. Now again, what's 3 factorial equal? 6, right? So look at what cancels now. Boop. And what else cancels nicely? Boop, boop. So all that's left is seven times five, which is 35. So most of these guys that have that are you know relatively you know small numbers like 10 and, and less, okay, to mem uh, sorry, um, sets of 10 or less, you can do these without using your calculator, just using canceling, using basic multiplication. Okay, so it really isn't that bad. So in your homework, when I ask you to show it to me by hand, that's what I wanna see. I know it looks like a hideous mess, but what you're doing is showing me how things canceled. So that's what, what it means by, by going at it by hand. But certainly we're gonna to get to problems where you don't want to do this by hand. So what if we had like 43 choose 
20. So this is going to be 43 factorial over 20 factorial times 23 factorial. So if you want to do this, you're going to go 43, 42, 41, 40, all the way down until you get to 23 factorial to do some canceling. But what a horrid, I mean, the reason why we use the factorial notation is to make the problem easier as it is. This is a disaster. So now you could put that into your calculator, or we could go directly to the calculator notation with the 43, choose 20. Okay, so the 43 choose 20. Now, do you remember where your permutation was? Okay, so remember on your calculator that we have put in the 43, and then we go to math over to PRB and down, not to NPR, but to NCR, Boop. and we plug in 20. And it's still a massively huge number, but let the calculator find the massively huge number for you instead of you having to do it yourself. So I ended up with, we ended up with 9.61 times 10 to the 11th. Yeah, definitely a hideous number, okay? So if you have 43 people in your club and you need to choose a committee of 20, there are plenty of ways to do that. So many ways that we wouldn't be able to do that in our lifetime. Okay? So calculator definitely helps you out here. Okay, so I want you to learn to do it by hand, so I want you to practice this way, but I also want you to be able to do the big ones on your calculator. Okay, so let's look at a couple more. Um, so let's say I asked you to find five, choose one. Okay, five, choose one. So you have five people in your club and you need to choose one of them to put on the bake sale. How many ways can you do that? Okay. So hopefully you realize that there are only five different options. But if you need the formula, the formula would be five factorial over one factorial times four factorial. So we would go five times four factorial over four factorial, and there's the five. Okay, because one factorial number it doesn't really matter. Okay, so whenever you have a number choose one, there's always that particular number of ways of doing it. So if it was seventy-two choose one, okay, then this is going to be seventy-two. So anytime there's a one on the bottom, boop, it's just the original top number. Now, I want to show you something else. Let's say that I wanted you to do 72, choose 71. Okay. Now, in this case, we're taking a club of 72 people and we're choosing 71 of them to go do something. And at first you think, oh my God, that's a lot of different, that's a huge committee going to do something. But what I want you to think about here is how many people are left out? There's just one person left out, right? So actually what you're gonna do is choose the one person that doesn't get to be on the committee. So what that means is that there are 72 ways to do this. So what you're seeing is there's kind of a symmetry that you can choose people to be on the committee or you can do it the opposite way and say choose people to not be on the committee. And if you don't trust me, look at the formula. So this one will be 72 factorial over 71 factorial times one factorial. So again, we go 72 times 71 factorial over 71 factorial. Boop. And we're just left with the 72. <clears throat> so now we've got, if there's a one on the bottom, it's just the original top number, but we also have that if there's one missing, okay, so if the numbers are one apart, it's also the original top number. So we, we had 47 choose 46, okay, 
one number difference, this means it's just 47 different ways. So you're picking the one element that's being left out or the one person that's being left out. Okay, now let's remember from combinations because there are some things that they have in common, okay? Let's look at, or sorry, permutations I meant. Let's look back at permutations. Um, what if I had six choose zero? Okay. So permutation or combina combination, when you're gonna choose zero, okay? There's always one way to do that. You just stand here and don't do anything. So that was the same thing that we had in the last section as well. So six choose zero is just one. So again, anytime there is a zero on the bottom, it's always just one. So again, 57 choose zero. There's one way to do that. We just don't pick anybody. But on the flip side, what if we had six choose six? So we have six people in our club and we need a committee of six people so basically, isn't the whole club gonna get up and go, okay? Which means that there is one way to do that as well. Everybody's on the committee, and it doesn't matter what order you pick them in, so there's just one way to do that. So same thing goes here, 57 choose 57 also equals one. All right, so some kind of shortcuts there when you can, and when you can see the ones and the zeros and the numbers match or the ones, numbers are one off, you don't have to use your calculator, which is gonna be handy because we're gonna do enough of these that it gets tedious after a while. Okay, so I wanna show you a couple other things. four people, or four whatevers, and we're going to choose zero, okay? So four choose zero, okay, with the zero on the bottom means that this answer is one, and I'm going to write it below it to start off with. Now, I'm going to cycle through all of the guys that have um, fours on the top. So the next one would be four choose one, okay, four choose one, and we know there are four ways to do that if there's a one on the bottom. Then we're gonna go with four choose two. Okay, so we want four choose two, which we haven't done yet. So over down here, I'm gonna do four choose two. So that's gonna be four factorial over two factorial and then another two factorial. Now this one we can simply just you know write out that this is 24 divided by two times two, which is four. So this is 24 divided by four, which is six. So two, or sorry, four choose two is six. Then we'll keep going through the line. Four choose three, remember, the numbers are one off from each other, which means that that should be back to four. And then four choose four should get us back to one. Okay. And would you agree that that's all the different options with fours? I mean, the idea of doing four choose five, okay? if you have a club with four people in it, are you ever gonna be able to choose five? This doesn't make any sense, does it? Okay, so so that, doesn't, that doesn't count. So these are all the different options when we have four as the top number. And the answers happen to be one, four, six, four, one. One, four, six, four, one. Are those numbers familiar to anybody? Think about it for a minute, okay? And I'm not gonna say anything now because maybe some of you have got it right off the bat. Some of you, maybe not. So we're gonna do a little bit more, okay? So up here, I'm gonna ask you to do three choose zero. Now, three choose zero again should be one because there's a zero on the bottom. And then here, I'm gonna ask you to do three choose one, which should be three. Here, I'm gonna ask you to do three choose two, which should also be three because the numbers are one off. And then here, I'm gonna ask you to do three choose three, same number means the answer is one. 
And again, those are all of the options if we have three on the top. So we end up with the answers one, three, three, one. And then if it's fours, it's one, four, six, four, one. Are you seeing any pattern here? Any pattern at all? So I'm gonna erase this because I don't have more board, I apologize. So we've come back to this guy a number of times in this class already. We saw him on the very first day, and then it just kind of keeps seeming to pop up every once in a while. Two, four, six, one. All right, now obviously we could go further, but from what we had on the board before, Do those two guys look familiar? Okay. So what I want you to notice is that the combinations when you have four as your, as your N number, as your big number, are the fourth row of Pascal's triangle. When three was our top number, it's the third row of Pascal's triangle. So this is gonna be the fifth row, or sorry, the combinations that have five, okay, as their top number. So this guy right here, I want to decide what combination that would be. Okay. So it's in the fifth row, so it's going to start at five. But now the question is to decide what number goes on the bottom. So now we have to remember that when we did this, this guy, or so we'll start up here. This guy was four choose zero, right? So that means this guy would be five choose zero. This guy would be five choose one, and this guy would be five choose two. Okay. So what if we want this guy here? If we want that guy, that guy is represented as a, the row of six, so this is gonna be six, but then remember this starts zero, one, two, three, four. So that is going to be six, choose four. So let's say that you're without a calculator and um, you, know, you don't even have a piece of paper, okay? Well, of course you might have your phone so you can just ask your phone, but let's just say you're not doing that, okay? Um, but let, you know, you have this idea of, you don't have any, any mathematical skills or you don't wanna do any multiplication, but you're asked about a, a combination, if you have the triangle handy, so if you have your notes with you, or like, I know I'm a nerd, but in my office, I have Pascal's triangle as a poster on the wall over my desk, okay? So when, and I think, I think it's to 20 rows, so I have Pascal's triangle to 20 rows. So if someone asked me to do 17, whoops, see there, I wrote the line, 17 choose three, well, certainly I can get my calculator out or I could use the formula, I could do all of that, or I can just look up at the triangle, look at the 17th row, the one that has 17 in it, and go zero, one, two, three, boop, done. So when it comes to combinations, I sometimes think the easiest way to do them is by using the triangle. And what ends up happening is you end up kind of memorizing these guys because like I will never forget that four choose two is six because I always just remember it's the middle of the fourth row of the triangle, okay? So you definitely can um, use the triangle to help you out here, right? But that's just another weird little pattern. So see that triangle? It's popped up a number of times now, hasn't it? And here it is again, here it is again. Lots of patterns with the triangle. So the last thing that we're going to look at here um, is the deck of cards, and we're going to look at a five-card hand. Um, so the deck of cards is going to come into play um, 
in the in this chapter and then in the next chapter as well so now nowhere did it say that you needed to to play cards in order to to take this class but if you're familiar with cards that's fantastic um, if you're not my suggestion is to just google deck of cards and click on an image and it'll it'll put up all 52 and have all the different colors and and you so you can see everything um and I, I would do that, copy that off, or at least have it visual, so that any time that we're doing a homework problem or a problem, if you're not familiar with the deck of cards, that you can pull it out and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at here, okay? So the thing to remember in the deck of cards is that there are 52 cards. That's the most important thing here. Um, we want to remember that there are four suits so hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Okay, so four suits. And in each suit, the cards go um, two, three, four, all the way to 10, and then jack, queen, king, and ace. Okay. All right. So we're going to look at a five card hand so this would be a classic poker hand so if you're playing poker this would be five card stud poker which means that you get five cards from the deck and you just hope that something good came in those five cards so what we want to know is how many different hands are there. Okay. Now, the first thing to decide is whether this is a permutation or a combination. Okay, now, when you are dealt five cards from the deck, okay, the first thing that most people do, they pick them up and they start to rearrange them in the order that they want them arranged. Now, somebody else might have gotten those same five cards, but they may have arranged them in a different order in what seemed important to them. So when you get your, your five cards, the order that it comes in absolutely doesn't matter. It's the same five cards. It doesn't matter if you have them in order, if you have the black ones on one side and the red ones on the other. It absolutely doesn't matter. So there's no order here, no order, which means that we're looking at a combination. So we are essentially taking 52 cards and we're choosing five. Okay, so 52 choose five. And yes, we could write the formula out and do that, but this is a big number and we don't really need to. So we go 52, go to NCR, choose five, and we get 2,500,000. 98,960. So if you're dealing out five cards from the deck of cards, there are over two and a half different um, hands you could be dealt. Over two and a half million different hands. That is a lot of different hands. So it, it's almost weird that there's ever a repeat, right? But it does seem to happen, doesn't it? But there are lots and lots and lots of different hands. Now, when you play poker, not every hand is gonna have winning stuff in it, okay? So when you're playing poker, the first or the lowest winning hand that you can have is just a pair, a pair of anything. So what we wanna do is figure out how many hands have a pair in them. I should have moved this to the side, sorry. But let me ask, how many hands contain a pair? So when you're dealt out cards, it seems that all, there are a lot of times when you get your get five cards and you happen to get a pair. You happen to get two of a kind. I'm like, oh, oh nice. Okay, so that does happen quite a bit. But of the two and a half and a bit million different hands, how many of them actually contain a pair? So why is it that you tend to get a pair when you, when you hit dealt cards? So we're gonna do that using combinations. Now here's the thing, 
this is a, a very difficult, okay, so not a beginning level question. This is a lot higher in that, in the combination land. So I'm gonna work through this, but you might be like, what the hell, okay? But I want, I'll talk it through with you. So when we do this, we have to do this in a particular way. So the first thing, we're not just gonna deal out cards. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna choose which card we want or which number we want to have a pair of. Okay, so there are 13 different numbers or faces, 13 different, two through 10, and then Jack, Queen, King, and Ace. So we need to choose the number. So this is choosing, choose, number. Now, for those of you that are familiar with cards, most of us would like to choose the ace, okay? All right, so you choose the ace. Now, that's just choosing the card that we want to get the pair. Now we have to deal the pair. So in the deck, how many aces are there? Okay, there are four aces, and we need to deal ourselves two of them. Okay, so we're gonna deal two cards. Okay. Now, the other two aces we throw out of the deck. We don't want them because that would, well, I mean, we do want them, but that would give us three of a kind or four of a kind. So those other two aces go away. Now what we have to do is go back to the deck and we still need to deal ourselves three cards, don't we? Okay. So we're gonna go back to the deck, but we don't want any of those three cards to be matching because we need three random cards because we already have our pair. So now there are 12 different numbers left because we've already taken the aces and they're gone. And we need to choose three of them. Okay, of the 12 different numbers, maybe we'll choose a seven and a king and a four. Okay, so we're gonna choose other numbers. And choose other numbers. Now, once we have done that, we need to deal ourselves one of each one of those. So there are four sevens in the deck, we'll deal one. Okay, so here's a deal. There are four kings in the deck, we'll deal one. There's a deal. And there are four, what was my last number? Fours in the deck, and we'll deal one. So this makes sure that we get a pair of, of one card and then three random other cards that are not special at all. So it gives us a pair and three random. So we get our five cards. Now, look at that, that's six different combinations. Okay, six different combinations, what a pain in the butt. So if we're gonna do this, some of these I already know um, that you know, 13 choose one is 13, four choose two, we should hopefully remember, it was only a second ago we had that on the board, was six. Now 12 choose three, remember what 12 choose three was? 12 choose three. Actually, I don't think we did do that one before, but 12 choose three, I've got 220. Check on my picture. 220, yes. And then we've got four, four, and four. So four, four, and four. So when we multiply this all out, we've got 13 times six times 220 times four times four times four. Boop. And we end up with 1,098,000. 5 cards. Again, there were over two and a half million hands that we can get and a little over a million of them actually have a pair in them. Okay, So now does it make sense how when you get dealt out a card, right, you get dealt out, or five cards, sorry, you get dealt out a hand, that it's, it's not uncommon to get a pair. Okay, there, you know, it's less than half, but it's still a good portion of the time that you could get a pair. 
So um, when we get into probability, we'll do a bit more with the cards. I don't want you to let this freak you out, okay? I am not gonna ask you to do this. I might ask you to do this one, okay? How many different hands are there? But I'm not gonna ask you to, to calculate how many different ones have a pair or three of a kind or whatever. We'll do a couple more of these just so you can see, so we can you know, get into it a little bit more. But this is, this is more difficult. This is like if, we were in the, if you were gonna take like the next class. So that would come in the next class, not in our class, okay? But I just wanted you to be able to see it. Okay, so we're gonna practice using combinations. And remember that what you wanna ask yourself when you do each problem, even though it's in this section, you wanna ask yourself, does order matter? If order doesn't matter, no order, it's a combination. If order does matter, it was a permutation. Okay, so I know right now you're practicing your combinations, but what happens like when you take the test or when you go to do this homework assignment, it doesn't say whether it was a permutation or combination, you have to make that choice yourself. Okay, so you gotta be able to answer that question. Okie dokie, you guys. So that is combinations, and then next time we'll do the kind of oddball guys okay okay have a great day